Welcome to Village in Motion. Today is Tuesday, December 17th, 2019. A cold and rainy day outside, but we're having a good time inside, singing along with that song. And this morning for our first guest, we have Yolanda Edwards, who is a health care counselor from Garden Ridge. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> Tell us what a health care counselor is. Health care counselor, uh, to put it in simpler terms, is like a missions director okay. over at Garden Ridge. We facilitate any moves into assisted living, skilled nursing, memory care. Um, I've been in that role probably for about 90 days. Okay. I've been with Greenspring. So <laughs> yes, I've been with Greenspring for three years though. Oh, okay. So I'm really enjoying the new role. Good. What was your previous role? Business office manager over at Garden Ridge. Okay, so you know both sides of it. Know both sides, yep. That's good. So a health care counselor, you're in the, in the business of helping people decide would Garden Ridge be a good home for them? Yes, yes. And you do, the, do people come to you? Do you go out and, and advertise in any way? We do advertise, but we've been very lucky um, that the campus here, people decide that they need a higher level of care mm -hmm. and they reach out to us. The children reach out to us. Okay. Um, we do get some um, referrals from the community okay. at large, the Springfield area. So we've been very uh, successful in having um, people reach out to us. So to come to Garden Ridge, you don't necessarily have to live at Greenspring now. No, you don't necessarily have to uh, live here now, but you still have the requirements. We do have requirements that you have to meet because we are okay. a continuing care retirement community. Sure. So everyone has to meet the requirements as anyone else moving into independent living. And you're talking what kind of requirements? The, I, we know the financial requirements. Age requirements. Yes. We still have the age requirements. Oh, okay. Um, you have to have a certain level of care with assisted living. There are different levels. Mm -hmm. And then we have a memory care. So we do do assessments to determine your appropriate level of care. Okay. So if, if I thought, oh, I can be in assisted living and I'll be all right, you might assess it and say, no, not so much. Maybe a different level would be more appropriate Correct. for you. Correct. Okay. Yep. So um, we aren't full at Garden Ridge right now because we're doing a lot of rebuilding. Yes. So some of the, uh, there's one wing, I guess, that they're working on completely top to bottom? They're working on Rose Court. Okay. Um, we thought they would be finished, mm -hmm. but with construction, you cannot determine. So they're moving along, but I think we're probably going to be at the end of January for that to be completed. And that's all the, they're all four floors? Yeah, RC1. Okay. Yes. I will say that um, when you said we're not full, we are full in assisted living. But those, except for those rooms, except for that those are rooms being that are being redone. renovated, yes. Yeah. So we're actively recruiting for that, um, for waiting lists. We've been very uh, fortunate that people are looking at assisted Good. living. Uh, so we have a very vibrant census with assisted living. So the the new rooms, mm -hmm. I know they're taking three rooms and making them into two. Yes. Mm -hmm. So each one will be larger. Yes. And each one will have its own bathroom that it did not have before. Yes. And I think they are getting kitchenettes as well, oh. which is a good thing. Feedback when you're touring people, that seems to be a big thing. They so want to be able to yeah. like have a little microwave oven or something. You in can't a sink. cook. You still can't cook in your room, but you still could probably have a microwave okay. and things like that. So the feedback has been... Or maybe a small refrigerator. Yes. Yes. So the new rooms, are, are they different from the other existing rooms in Rose Court? No, they're still the same. You're going to go with the same finishes. It's just they're larger. Okay. Larger okay. rooms. That's good. Is that what the market is saying? That, hey, if, if you want people to come to your facility, you need to offer something a little larger. Yes. And a lot of times you find couples don't want to be separated. That's a oh. big thing. So couples that live independent living together, if they need a higher level of care, they sometimes want to transition together. Okay. So that is a need that we want to try to meet. Do we have even larger rooms for couples or are these new rooms large enough for a couple? Uh, they will be large enough for a couple. And in Dogwood Commons, the newer mm -hmm. building, yes. we do have rooms that can accommodate couples. We are, are they full single level. rooms or double rooms? Single or rooms, single but they're rooms. one bedrooms. Okay. Yep. It's, it's, so it's a room and a bedroom? or Yes, just a room and a bedroom. And that's for couples. Yes. And that's or for someone who wanted to pay that amount of money. Yes. So I have a question. I've mm -hmm. seen on your, on your um, 
fee list mm -hmm. that you have levels A, B, C, what, oh, I don't understand what that is. Right, that's what we talked about a couple minutes ago. If you decide, hey, I want to move to assisted living. Okay. We will assess you. An assisted living manager, as well as a clinical manager, looks at you to see what help you need with your activities of daily living, mm -hmm. where you are with medication management, and just different things. They look at you as an individual. A would be the lowest package, E would be the highest. And then the next level would be memory care. So E is where you would need the most assistance. The most assistance, okay. yes. So I, I, I always, I'm sure people have heard me use my mother as an example many mm -hmm. times, but she was in assisted living for a long time. Mm -hmm. And when she first went there, she was able to get around on her own, no problems, whizzing up and down the hall. By 12 years later, she needed a lot of assistance. Mm -hmm. She was still in assisted living, but just barely there in right. order to be able to stay there. Right. So she would have been in level E, a higher level of care. Yeah, probably a higher level. Okay. Yes. Okay. And that can change over a period of time as it, a person is there. Of course. Um, you get yearly assessments. Once you move in, uh, you're assessed in one package and then after you've been in your environment for about 30 days, we assess you again okay. to make sure you're at the appropriate level or if you become acclimated to your area, you mm -hmm. could decrease. Your oh, package okay. could decrease. Okay. So we do look at you yearly to see where you are. And more often if necessary, I'm sure. And more sure. often. If, if you have an acute situation and something changes before the year, you could uh, go up in package or go down. So Now, if someone was in assisted living and had to go and have some medical procedure done and then had to move into rehab for a while, is there room still there in assisted living? Yes. It's just like your home. Okay. No, no different than independent living. If you go out to the hospital, that's your home. Mm -hmm. We maintain that. You come over to skilled nursing, we get you back healthy, and you move back to your assisted living apartment. Okay. So the um, the skilled nursing skilled nursing is different from the rehab portion. Am I using an incorrect term? No, you're using the correct term. Okay. The skilled nursing could encompass long-term care as well as acute rehab, okay. meaning if you had uh, knee surgery or you know acute situation where you needed to rehab, okay. all of that's available under one house. So let's let's say I have a, a new knee and mm -hmm. get a knee replaced, and I come to the to the rehab portion of, and I come there for rehab. Mm -hmm. Does Medicare pay for that? If you've had a three-night stay in the hospital, of course. But only if you've had a three-night yes. stay. Yes. Medicare says you have to be inpatient in the hospital for three nights and then have an order written by a doctor to go to rehab. Okay. What if I have long-term care insurance? Where does that come into the mix? Long-term care usually has a confinement period before they pay out. Sometimes the minimum is 90 days, but your hospital and your skill time does count. And then okay. depending on your policy, each one is different. Yes, because I, I know in our policy yep. it's, it's the, a certain number of weeks before it would yep, pay. Yep, a certain number of weeks, which calls confinement period, before mm -hmm. they'll pay out. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. So I understand you're going to have some educational events coming up. Yes, I'm really excited about that. With my new um, job we're looking at for 2020, having educational things. We find that knowledge is power. Uh, our first event will be the 21st of January. Uh, evening event at Hunter's Crossing. I believe it's from 6 to 7. Okay. And it's uh, how to know when a transition or when a loved one needs memory care. So this is, we don't want to confuse these with the upcoming Form. finance forms. No, the finance forms a whole are different. different deal. Whole different deal. Okay, so you're going to advertise this well. We're going to advertise. That's coming. Everything is on the press, ready mm -hmm. to be printed and put out. Um, so it will be a two-day event. Okay. One in the evening to accommodate children and families okay. of loved ones or POAs that cannot come during the day. Mm -hmm. And then the 22nd, it will be from, I believe, 12 to 1. Okay. Both of them at Hunter's Crossing. Okay. So they'll be identical? They'll be identical, but just different just times. What time is yes. convenient for you? Just to you. target different audiences. Okay. Yep. And the point is to, to help people understand when a move to memory care might be needed. Of course, yes. Yeah. yes. And one thing with memory care that... that I'm sure many of us know here mm -hmm. is that everyone tries to, to hang on and not go there and then sometimes bad things can happen and then there's no question. Yes. So, so kind of better to think ahead. Yes. Yeah. So we will be reaching out to see what people want to hear about, what people want to learn about. Okay. Um, so we'll be reaching out to the community to find out what events you want to hear about. And, and I'm sure a lot of people are like me that Garden Ridge is over there 
Right. <laughs> and I really don't know a lot of, you know, I know little bits and uh -huh. pieces about it, but these forums would be very helpful. Forums would be very helpful. We'll offer tours. Sometimes people want to come confidentially. They don't want to really say, uh -huh. Oh, I want to come there. Uh, we're thinking about offering respite stays. If you have now, what a, is a respite stay? A respite stay is a stay where you're coming if you have a loved one and you're a caregiver, and you either need a break or you're going on vacation, or if your children want, don't want you in your apartment, if they're the caregivers, mm -hmm. you can come to Garden Ridge for a temporary amount of time. Okay. Stay respite. If you like it, you're trying it before you decide this is where I really want to go. Okay. So we're here for a respite stay, and we're here if you want to try before you buy into it. Okay, and that's that's an important point, just to try it and see it. Try it and, and see. And make sure that you, you can experience it for yourself instead yes. of listening to what others may say. Exactly. Yeah, good. We're, we're a very friendly bunch over there. I'm sure you are. <laughs> You're a very active place. I know yes. that I see your calendars, lots going on. Yep. Okay, Yolanda, thanks for visiting with thanks us. Thanks for morning. having me. We sure learned a lot. Thank you.